Good afternoon. This video, I'll take a brief look at this live stream that Brian Dangler did. And uh, Jason asked me to take a look at it real quick. First off the bat, he starts doubting, questioning about the methods. And he makes a comment that he, he had said these are heels of the faith in his video series on that, mentioning guys like uh, Sam Jones and Wesley. Shelby, the guy he was pushing, his movie, is a Methodist. This is how this guy is always flipping and flopping around. He doesn't know what he believes, people. And, and I really have been very promotional to being a Methodist. And uh, I don't know. My uh, real Bible version issue exposed. I, I called a number of people, you know, heroes <laughs> in the faith. And now I'm kind of thinking, eh, they want yeah. to. So his Bible version issue, he called another a number of Methodists heroes of the faith. He pushes Shelby, who's a Methodist. Now he's wondering about that. Yeah. And all these guys just laugh. <laughs> They're all laughing back and forth, like a couple of hyenas. So, so. It's pretty bad. I mean, Methodists are pretty bad stuff, you know. Really. So, remember that, people. He has videos out there with he's pushed. He saw about how he was in the faith. Wesley, Sam Jones, and Shelby. Now he's talking about how bad the Methodists are. Mm -hmm. I've been looking at the whole thing. A lot of them actually, they actually denounce or actually don't believe in the atonement of Jesus Christ. They believe that imputed righteousness is a myth. And I say Methodists won't say. Excuse me. It's crazy. And that's, yeah, that's satanic. That's what Catholics believe. Yeah. Remember, this is the guy putting Shelby. Shelby's a Methodist. <laughs> this, guy, right? um, See. this is the this is guy you're following, people. Now he's turning on the Methodists. My kids know what the Methodists taught. Here, somebody had a question real quick. I'll figure out how to answer it. I figure we could answer it. Can y'all can you all just talk about what's at hand? Why bring up all this? Um, well, basically, um, I guess we're going to be doing the video on the dispensationalism on Saturday. Uh, oh, well, I look forward to seeing that one. When they push faith works. Don't forget, these guys are pushing faith works people and dispensationalism. So, look into that one. What was that guy's name? I can't think of his name. They also think the time of Jacob's trouble is seven, the seven years of, of, of uh, Daniel's seventh week. It's not, people. He keeps talking about the time of Jacob's trouble. That's that's mid point. That's when the Jews have to start fleeing. Name of oh, um, one of Stephen Anderson's cult followers or whatever. What is cult ringers? It's my cult. <laughs> cult, cult, cult member talking about another cult member. Yeah, yeah, yeah. that guy. Yeah, what's it? Yeah, that's one thing to do on that whole thing, too. Is I really don't feel like showing stuff of attacking Ruckman's personal life and whatever else. You know, Ruckman was a sinner. We're, we're saved sinners. Uh, if you want to dig up dirt on us and whatever else, to try to disprove doctrine. Oh, he's supposed to live a changed life, Brian. Oh, now you're not supposed to dig up dirt. He's talking about Anderson guys. Oh, you're the changed life guy. How could they be digging up dirt on you? You have a changed life. Well, yeah, that's pretty lousy, in my opinion. He does it. He goes out digging on dirt on people, going through YouTube. I'm going through his uh, computer, trying to find things on people. That's what this guy does. Um, you know, Ruckman did an uh, dispensational teaching. You know, so. It, I, I just don't feel like we a whole lot of time on that, you know, the the whole thing of going, you know, playing it and whatever else. I haven't even seen the video. I didn't even see on that, you know, that that's a lot of the video. Right. Yeah, I haven't seen it either. I just glanced at it, you know, but um, I guess maybe we'll just go over the, 
the anti-dispensational stuff, pretty much. Yeah, we'll have to look at it and things. Um, I don't think he was. I don't, I'm not sure if uh, maybe one time Husky showed up there. Uh, Brian showed up there. I know they mentioned Kim. I know they mentioned Robert Breaker. Uh, Brian Daniel might have shown up there once in that in that video. Answer the question over here, real quick. Where do you get the posters behind you? Um, this one behind me here, Second Corinthians five uh, seventeen. That's from Bible Baptist Bookstore. Bible Baptist Bookstore, Trinitarian. Look it up. Check them. Call them up. Ask them. Ask them if they believe in the Trinity. Or if they believe in the Godhead that Brian Denninger teaches you. So, yeah. Contrary there. Thank you. Put that in there. That's why I don't do live feeds, people. <laughs> this is very boring. Just sitting there looking at some, you know, talk. What about the Free Presbyterian Church in Northern Ireland? Um, don't really know much about it. I know Eon Paisley was involved with that. And I heard he was, you know, good for a while, but then he kind of backpedaled a little bit with the Catholics, I think. So. So what? Okay. Tell us what you think. <laughs> yeah. Supposed to know everything, right? Your, what, your cult members are looking to you, Brian. Give them answers. They're Presbyterian, they're Calvinist. Okay? So, what does that tell you? They're Calvinist. Your thoughts on Benedict Rice resigning? I guess that means uh, Pope Benedict. I didn't even know about that. I didn't either. Hmm. Is is the book on Charles Spurgeon, Spurgeon worth to buy? Uh, well, Spurgeon, I mean, you know, I believe he was saved, but, you know, he did have some problems. Mm -hmm. You know, I do, I do disagree with him a lot of things, but I consider him, as far as I know, I really haven't really fully looked into him, you know, like I did the Methodist. As far as I know, he wasn't a Methodist, so. No, but he got saved at a Methodist church, you half wit. That's why he got saved. He got saved in a Calvinistic church. He got saved in a Methodist church. That's where he heard the gospel. These two people are idiots. <laughs> no. It, there's a really old picture of Spurgeon, and he's got his hand in his, you know, vest thing. And somebody said to me, what do you think about this? You know, and, and it was a Mason and whatever. I don't know. I, I haven't been able to prove one way or the other. Oh, because he had look for hand signals now. He was a Mason. Honestly, honestly, yeah, honestly. Um, what about the gap theory? Um, to me, it just sounds like a diverse and strength doctrine. I don't really get into that. Yeah, I agree with that. It's kind of a compromise <laughs> to evolution. Yeah, it's not a compromise with evolution. Evolution is not do with evolution. How would you answer a preacher that says Jesus is only coming twice? He's a he is against the catching away. Well, uh, I don't really understand what he's saying here. I guess he's saying that well, Jesus is not coming. You know, he's coming once. He came once in, on the earth, you know, in flesh, and then he's going to come again, the second coming. The rapture is not a little coming. He's not. I mean, he's not touching down on the earth. He comes for his saints, and then he comes with his saints. It's the second coming. It's two parts, the second coming. Just like there's two resurrections. Yep. Absolutely. <laughs> it's like, yeah, I guess. I mean, two parts and one, and one resurrection. You got, the, you got the first part of resurrection, which are all believers, and the second part, which are unbelievers. Working. <laughs> uh, yeah. Let me stop here, these people. Get this up. I don't want to spend too much time. Get this up quick. Just show you know, don't know what they're talking about, people. Now he's changed his view on Methodist. He bit the whole big thing about Shelby. 
Shelby's in Methodist. <laughs> what are you talking about? He put the hills in the face. He had Sam Sam Jones. He had he had uh, a Wesley. I, I guess this guy uh, uh, Rod of Iron. That's his new. That's, that's the guy who followed his name Husky. Yeah, he followed the, took his name and everything. So now I found, found the Methodists have changed. The Methodists have declined. The Methodists have changed their doctrines. There's fag, fragment fragments in the fractions, as you say, factions in the Methodist movement. We got like a conservative Methodist. You have a, a more liberal Methodist. Most of the Methodists are liberal. You know, Hillary Clinton's a Methodist, but they have a conservative wing to Methodists. Spurgeon was saving Methodist Church. I think Peter Buckman was saving Methodist Church. But because uh, it's a, a true gospel. They were teaching a true gospel. Faith in the blood, Jesus Christ, death, pain, resurrection. But their problem, of course, they they believe you had to maintain the faith in order to, to, to maintain that salvation. So they had a problem with eternal security. And of course, they had a, Wesley had a view of perfectionism. He actually believed you could get perfect. Uh, sinless. And, uh, and theoretically, the problem is you can't. <laughs> That's the problem because you don't have to sin. You have overcome sin. Theoretically, the ability is there, but you won't. So it's, you know, because that's, that's just the reality. You're going to be back and forth in, in your two natures. And so he looked at the theory behind it and said, look, you know, there's no reason why you have to sin. You have, you have the power over sin. It's what six talks about. But the reality is the flesh is very strong in temptation. Of course, you didn't have sin, uh, Satan in, in the world tempting as well. And so you will sin. Uh, but you have the you have the ability to confess that sin and get back in fellowship. That's the issue of First John one nine. I'll put this up. Maybe we'll listen, listen to a few more minutes more on this and see what he has to say. And you see the people up there listening. You know, it's like, oh, listen to idiots. I don't know what they're talking about. We know. Now he's going after the Methodists. He spent all that time defending Shelby because Shelby lived a changed life. Remember, the emphasis on Shelby was his changed life. He went from that to that. He went from this guy didn't know anything to, you know, he's out there, you know, circuit riding. And of course, the fact he left six of his six children by himself, you know, basically uh, unattended. Uh, and, uh, you know, that's a whole different issue, according to these guys. Well, that, you know, doesn't show exactly a Christian uh, way of uh, handling your family. But now he's going after the Methodist. I'm not sure about the Methodists. <laughs> well, Spurgeon was saved in the Methodist church. If you, believe, if you think Spurgeon was saved, that's where he got saved. And he got saved. In a Calvinistic church, you got saved is the Methodists. But old time Methodists were teaching a whole different doctrines. And you know, of course they are, they were using the King James Bible as well. But we'll stop here. Amen. Thank you.